let's get into testing some new makeup um, in the mood. We're gonna do a try on today. We're gonna do a full wear test on the new foundation that I picked up. So let's get into talking about what's on today's agenda for the try on. And of course I will be linking everything in the description box with timestamps. So if you guys wanna skip ahead to a particular product, you can. Let's go through it uh, one by one here. So I picked up the MAC Studio Fix 24 hour matte foundation with oil control. This has been reformulated. I have never tested the original. In fact, the only base products that I've tested from MAC was like the Total Face Pen, which was marketed as an all over pen, but also like mostly as a concealer, which I don't think it was good as a concealer. And we'll talk a little bit about the reformulation and we're gonna do a wear test on this bad boy. It's pretty early in the morning. It's a Sunday. And so we'll have a good chance to test it out. And then I also picked up the new shade in the No Limits Cream Bronzer Stick from LYS, you guys. This is in Hope, which is fair. I have tried this product before, but it was sent to me in a boxy charm and it was in the medium shade, so it was already too deep. So I really only tested it once to see that it just wasn't a good shade for me. So we'll get to see how the fair shade looks. Is it too yellow? Is it neutral? And then Sephora dropped some bronzers and I, I don't think these are reformulated because I want to say they only had their contours, but I could be wrong. This was the matte version and those sneaky little buggers, they threw in a shimmer version like a week after this launched. I'm pretty sure. I would have loved to have tested the shimmer, but we'll test this. Then I picked up uh, a liquid blush and <laughs> goes like, I can't stop. It's the Give Beauty Dewy Plump Collagen Cheek Tint in one shade, hibiscus, yes. And then I got two new lip products. So Sephora actually came out with a couple of lip products that were actually pretty interesting to me. Some of their lip products are really good. This one was, I wanna say not the sheer one. Yeah, this one was the Lacquer Shine. They had one that was like more sheer, like a sheer balm with pigment. And then finally from the drugstore, NYX dropped their Butter Gloss Bling. And I'm a sucker for a blingy gloss, a glittery gloss, a metallic gloss. I'm a sucker for it. So we'll test this out. And this one is in the shade 07. That's it, you guys. Let's get into it. So we're obviously gonna start off with the foundation. Let's talk a little bit about this. It doesn't say like what exactly has changed, but when you say 24 hour matte with oil control foundation, I say where? I did pick this up on Ulta's website. So you guys, this is crazy to me. This comes in 67 shades. I've never seen a brand do a larger range than that ever. You guys tell me if you've seen anything bigger. I know Fenty's gone 50 and 55. I've never seen 67. Don't know if that's new for this product or if MAC has always done that, but that's some serious stuff. So it says MAC's original matte foundation has been remastered with a soft matte finish. It has 87% skincare ingredients and easy to apply pump now in 67 shades. So that looks like they have added additional shades to this range. 24 hour color true wear, non cakey coverage, flake free. It doesn't say necessarily like call outs of what the skincare in here is. It has an SPF of 15 and it is octanoxate and titanium dioxide. So it's a chemical sunscreen. No change in the bottle so far as I can tell. It might have been a frosted glass at one point. I don't know. It is your standard one fluid ounce and it's made in Canada. If you guys have never seen my foundation wear test before, I do one side with a brush, one side with a clean sponge to see if there's like a preference or if one applies better than the other. I have mine in the shade NW13. Here's what it looks like on the back of the hand. It's a little bit runny, which I like to see with a matter foundation. It doesn't always mean that it's gonna be like super thin, but it's usually the type of formula that I like. Okay, let me see what NW13, fair beige with neutral undertones for light skin. That's actually usually the description of the foundation that I'm trying to get. I don't even remember the shade that I have in the total face pen. I think it's the total face pen. Maybe it's just like the face pen, I don't even know but it was kind of a lighter shade for me than I like to go. I think it matched my skin tone really well. It's just, I like to go a little bit deeper. All right, let's blend. Okay, that's like a gorgeous shade match. It has a weird scent to it. It's not completely scentless. This is supposed to be medium to full buildable coverage, blurring soft matte finish, water and transfer resistant, oil shine control, non-drying does not clog pores. It's all the stuff that I would really like, but 
I let this kind of sit on the back of my hand. I could kind of feel it like getting a little bit dry as I was blending. It feels more like, like a self-setting product. Then it takes a while to dry down. So there's no real radiance to it by the time I was done blending it in. I don't think you need to work quickly though. I think what I did was plenty of time. All right, let's go into the other side. I love when I'm filming on Sundays and my son is like, I'm gonna take the opportunity to scream a lot today. All right, my first impressions is that it is a truly soft matte finish. It looks pretty natural on the skin, meaning I don't think it looks too heavy with the amount that I applied. I think it gives enough medium coverage right away. I could have gone in with less product and still been very happy with the amount of coverage that I got out of this. Oh, it is so beautiful on the skin. I love when a foundation is just immensely blurring. That's such a, like a, an immediate attraction of mine. Like the moment I get it on and I'm like, wow, it lays perfectly. It seems to kind of smooth the skin out. I'm immediately drawn in, even if the coverage level isn't high. So. I already am enjoying the finish of this, but we need to throw on concealer and powder. So I have some stuff here. I'm just gonna use my LYS Triple Fix Serum Concealer because it hasn't left my filming station. Now I'm taking my Dior Backstage Powder No Powder, and this one is in, I think, 2N. I am lightly setting, like beep, beep, boop, boop. Okay, we're done. Okay, let's throw on the lipstick because I'm probably gonna end with the NYX because I just, Think that's gonna look gorgeous so the two that they came out with was the about that shine sheer shine lipstick and it retails for 16 dollars in 15 different shades so this one also retails for 16 dollars. it's about that shine lacquer shine lipstick is the full name it again comes in 15 different shades it's kind of got this like duochrome packaging i don't know if you guys can see that this one is in the shade 03 it's called pink plasma it's still balm like though it has like a decent shine to it. Oh, that's so creamy. It almost feels cold going on. Look at that one swipe. Oh, that's gorgeous. Intensely pigmented high shine, but feels like you're putting on a balm. It's a really comfortable formula. And it has a, it's like this really slight fruity fragrance, honestly. It's like, why am I getting like YSL vibes off this? Is there something else in here that I'm smelling? I don't know. It has kind of like a, the YSL scent to it. Are they copying them? Mm -hmm, okay. Oh, this shade is just fabulous. This is a really nice shade. Yeah, I'm totally getting like YSL smell off of this. Totally. Like it's so reminiscent, like not immensely copying. I don't know. Anyway, let's move on to the LYS bronzer stick. I am really excited to test out this shade. So I think the extensions that they brought to this were the most light and I feel like somewhere in the middle. So Hope was neutral undertones, natural finish for fair skin and then Honest was a warm undertone natural finish for medium to tan skin. So those are the two additional shades. This still retails for $20. It looks like Honest is already sold out on Sephora's website. And the only two shades that are still available here are the two at the opposite end of the spectrum, the lightest and the deepest shade here. I'm hoping this doesn't like come out too yellow. A lot of times I feel like when they go neutral and they go light, they go too yellow or they just, they go too deep. Mm. I'm gonna have to blend this into the cheeks to really see whether or not this is gonna come out the shade that I'm hoping because this looks a tad yellow <laughs> for me. I'm sure it's really difficult to get like bronzer shades that are like what you're looking for for just a bunch of different undertones with a good shade range. All right, it's a little bit more yellow than I would normally reach for, which is something I hate if I was gonna wear a pinkish blush which I'm doing today. Um, but this might be nice if I was wearing a peachier blush, I could get away with something like this. The fact is it blends perfectly. I'm assuming it's still the same great formula. I told you guys, I've only tried this personally once and it went on creamy as can be. And then I never wore it again because it was just too deep. I'm not in love with the shade, not in love 
but I don't hate it. I, I think maybe I like the formula more than I like the shade. And now having tried the blushes from this line, I feel like I like this formula better. Just having drawn it onto my cheeks, the blush is just a little intense. I wore it yesterday again because I always test my makeup after I've done my initial review of it. You guys, it like stayed on all day. It wouldn't come off. The rest of my makeup had basically faded and it was like, oh, just cheeks. That's all I was yesterday. So I find that formula a little bit more difficult to work with because it's so creamy and it's so intensely pigmented. This is so light, it's not bad. But again, I feel like this is definitely more yellow than I would normally reach for, like at the current moment, but it's still like, good looking on the skin, if that makes sense. I'm not hating it. That was so easy to blend and it's kind of fun. I mostly hate their packaging in this triangle shape. I don't think this is like a perfect triangle, is it? No, it's not. Um, but for the purposes of applying this, I love it. I don't love the blush the same way. When you tap it on, it doesn't seem to like apply the product evenly. I don't know, this one just a lot easier to work with and you can go a little bit more ham with it. Those are kind of my initial thoughts. Okay, let's go into the matte bronzer from Sephora. So this also retails for $16 and it comes in five different shades. It's just a bronzing powder that has a hybrid creamy silky texture that melts into the skin for a natural sun-kissed result. Some of these deeper shades look like they have more reddish undertones. Mine in 00, which is sun-kissed haze, which is fair light bronze, looks pretty darn neutral. Whereas some of the other ones look like they have a little bit of red to them. I even feel like looking at these pictures and like that's usually a, a bad decision that the one in zero one golden gateway for light golden bronze even looks like a shade that I could probably get away with. But I usually always regret not getting the lightest shade. Let's be honest here. I think the packaging is a step up for them. This is almost like Lucite. That's kind of how hefty this particular plastic component is. And I never loved like the contour and the blushes in the original, like super small and they just kind of felt chintzy and cheap. This still feels like lightweight, but it feels sturdier than their other packaging. Okay, this looks like um, a pillowy delicious delight, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it's like, a full pillow here. Wow, this one even looks a little bit yellow. Okay, no, maybe not. It was a lot more yellow. See my finger? And then when I swatched it out, mm, it's a little bit more neutral. It still has a hint of yellow. I wonder if like people are trying these on someone with fair skin and they're like, yeah, that's it. That's the shade right there. All right, we're going on the forehead with this guy. Oh, hold on, hold on. It smells like perfume like a full on bar of soap. It's so fragranced. I'm telling you, Sephora put some fragrance in these. Yes, there is. I have never known Sephora to add fragrance to things. I've never smelled it in their blushes. I've never smelled it in their contour, like never. Have you guys ever smelt fragrance in their stuff? I'm telling you, the lip product has a fragrance. This bronzer smells like full on perfume. Okay, once you buff it in, I can see the hint of yellow. Like, especially in these lights, which are more yellow, but I, I could still see the yellow on my swatch. But it's not terrible. It's just not as neutral as some other ones that I know to be just more flattering. Oh my God, my son is just screaming. Like, you can definitely see kind of how yellow it is, like, especially on my finger. So be wary of that. I think um, these are not, like, true to what their pictures look like. This looks so neutral in the photos of this. It's a beautiful formula, but usually when it comes down to like, oh, that's so simple and soft and smooth, where it's not doing anything extra for me, it always comes down to how well does the shade look? And I still think it looks a little yellow. It's not the most flattering color on me. All right, let's go into the Dewy Plump Collagen Cheek Tint. This retails for $26 and it comes in six different shades. It is supposed to give you medium coverage with a radiant finish. It's supposed to be plumping. It's collagen supporting cheek tint that lasts all day. Okay. It comes with Sepalift. Supports collagen to minimize the appearance of fine lines and ultra filling spheres, which smooths and hydrates. It says cutting edge collagen supporting ingredients and offers buildable radiant tinted color for cheeks. There aren't very many reviews on this yet at all. Again, this is in the shade Hibiscus. I like Gwen Stefani. I never get mad at any of her releases. Oh, this is cute. 
you know, in a world of like the same packaging over and over again, I feel like give just, we know what give products look like, you know, they just kind of stand out. Maybe that's a little bit crazy and there is some interesting packaging on the market. I just feel like she just does a little bit different. So it's a pretty sheer formula, pretty thin formula too. Like I built this up with like a couple of layers to really get it like that. I wanna blend this in. At first it wasn't the smoothest blend, but I feel like it evened itself out. Like once I kept rubbing, tiny bit of a radiant finish. We'll see how much radiance we get from it. Like once I start buffing it in, I think I'm gonna try the one dot method to see if this works. See how easy it is to blend in and now, oh goodness. Uh, see if it's too much. I almost never put a doe foot applicator straight on my cheeks anymore. It's almost like pointless, except just to easily get it to the back of my hand. Okay, so that one dot came out a little bit sheer, if you ask me. So I wanna take some more on the back of my hand and go in with a brush and see if I can't build this up. It's supposed to be medium coverage. I love me a radiant finish blush, but I have been saying lately, I am okay with sheer so long as it's not like translucent and then it just doesn't apply evenly on the skin. That bothers me. And I've been noticing like there are products that have radiance and that are a little bit more sheer that just aren't the flattering kind of sheer. So I built that up with three different dots and I don't think it's like super intense. I actually think that's really nice. So you can go in more sheer with this and then keep building and you get more out of it which I think is actually nice. I like having that option. It's fully dried too. By the way, I have like all of my blushes next to me in cream format that I have been retesting so that I can do a blush ranking video, like an updated one. And I can already tell how my preferences have changed or how my sense of how a blush performs has grown more acute. So I'm judging new blush launches so much more harshly just because there have been so freaking many and they're not all spectacular just because they're fun. This seemed like the perfect brush to use with it, something super fluffy, but I'm not gonna lie, like I went in with three different dots. So now I'm gonna try and go with a heavier layer on first pass and see if um, that's all it takes, I guess. That basically gave me what like three tiny dots did. I kind of like layered it up. It's a really nice flush of color without being like translucent, you know, where all of my freckles start to peek through and it applied super evenly and it's nice and creamy so it didn't get patchy. And because it's like fully dried down already, that's gorgeous. We'll see how long this lasts. We're gonna do a wear test on everything. So we'll see on this guy. Yeah, I love how buildable this is. This looks really flattering on the cheeks, I think. You know, if you just keep me up here, I'll just keep slapping on the blush. Sometimes I just don't know when to quit. It's just so fun to apply. Oh, I just think that's so pretty. There's no harsh lines. It kind of like seamlessly went into the skin. Nice and sheer when it first starts out. Totally a buildable formula. You can go intense with it. It's completely dried on my face. The thing I will say though is like just the tiniest bit of radiance. The way I buffed it in, I don't think it has like you know, it's not like a radiant blush. It might be if you use like a dampened sponge or something else, but this is not like a crazy radiance. By the way, is this lip product not like great? Still shiny. Sephora usually does a really good job with their lip products, but it's gotta come off because we're gonna go into the NYX. All right, NYX coming in hot. These are $6 a piece and probably the most affordable glitter looking lips that I have. I've got a couple and I actually just got some from, I wanna say Queen Cosmetics that are coming that are beautiful glitter. But now I'm like looking at this thinking maybe I could have just gotten different shades in this butter gloss bling. So yeah, six bucks a piece. There is eight shades here and I picked up mine in the shade, oh, I told you guys. 07, which is called Big Spender. I'm pretty sure it's so hard to tell because they don't have like the name here. They just put like the number. It's just like the deepest maroon shade. Pretty smooth formula. The butter gloss usually is. It's not as intensely pigmented as I kind of thought it was gonna be. That was like a couple of swatches too. It says meet butter gloss's new iced out fam. Okay, the OG non-sticky America's number one butter gloss is getting dripped out with sparkly shine. Okay, so it says eight new blingy sheer to medium coverage shades. It says universally flattering gloss that can even be layered on top of other lip 
favorites for an elevated blinging pout. I'm like thinking this maybe is like too sheer. Let's try it like just on its own. It smells like a freaking cookie. It's not like vanilla necessarily, but it smells like a cookie. The sparkles are super tiny. Yeah, not terribly intense, you guys. These sparkles are like the smallest little sparkles ever. It's like 12 of them gone on my lips total. <laughs> but it is really pretty. It has a nice shine to it. Nice high shine, very, very comfortable formula. Again, smells delicious. It's only $6. I wouldn't even mind like testing other shades or three or four in this because it's so inexpensive as far as like lip products go. And I built this up, like I kept layering it over and over to get more intensity and it never got heavy on me. So far, I'm definitely recommending this and it looks like it has so many freaking reviews, you guys. I hate when they import reviews, but I mean, that's fine. I just, I never feel like they're unadultered, you know? If you guys are new to my channel, watching this video for the first time, the way that I handle my wear test is, I do a natural light check-in for you guys right away, right at this window here on my phone. And then I do a natural light check-in on my phone around four to five hours. And at the very end of the evening, I come back and sit down and I give you my final thoughts on this guy. We look over the footage and we can also see how it's holding up. I do at least an eight hour wear test. Sometimes it's more, it's never less. So that's it for the try on portion, you guys. I'm gonna go to the window over here and do a natural light check-in for you guys. But I will see you guys back here later this evening. Bye for now. <laughs> oh, doing this outro is gonna be interesting with my son sitting right in the living room at the bottom of the stairs making a ton of noise. We downloaded Fortnite for him and I feel like that was a mistake. But I have good news. Um, this foundation held up really well. I started putting on my foundation or sitting down to do the video around nine. I got done a little bit after 9.30 and it's now after 6.30, it's 6.39. And I wanted to come in and do the check-in now because I was definitely getting a little sweaty and a little dewy. It's Sunday, I always do cleaning and laundry. And I mean, clearly I like changed my clothes, threw my earrings off, all of that good stuff. But it's been nine hours, just about nine hours now. While I'm talking, I will show you guys what it looked like right away in natural light. I don't think it looked too heavy. It was a soft matte. I think that it smoothed out my skin like I told you guys. I did the check-in at five hours. Everything I feel like still looked pretty good. I don't think I had like a huge change anywhere. It, the only thing at that point I think that had faded was really the lip gloss was totally gone, but those NYX butter glosses are just smooth. They're not overly long lasting. And here we are nine hours later, I've been having the best luck with foundation try-ons lately. All of the new releases that I've been testing that claim to be mattifying, or even don't claim to be mattifying, tend to have lasted a little bit longer on me, even having combo skin. I don't know if it's like apparent, you guys, but like a ton of the foundation has come off of my nose. I'm totally like sweating in my T-zone, even if it's not like obvious on my forehead, like I'm fully greasy, just a, a grease ball at this point. Yeah, th there you go. When the light was down just a little bit, you could see it, but everything is still really intact. It didn't break the foundation up when my oil started peeking through, which is always something that I look for. Even if it's a nice foundation, when my oils start breaking it apart and then you can like see it and it starts looking splotchy and gross and broken up, it's just not something that's gonna work for my skin, my oily skin, whatever it is that I'm producing is not meshing with its ingredients, but this isn't doing any of that and everything held on. Blush, great. Great. Hopefully you guys can still see like how well this blush held up. I really enjoy it. I don't think it faded off funny. I think it was like just the right hint of like radiance and it like faded evenly throughout the day. And it, it looked good with the rest of the makeup too, which sometimes like I was telling you guys that LYS blush, when everything else was faded off of me, it was like still blush on my cheeks. So it, it kind of looked a little funny, being that long lasting, it kind of just didn't fade evenly and I didn't love that. The thing I will say about the foundation though, is that I don't think it's like the plus oil control that it claims. And the reason I say that is because even though I was working around the house and doing things, I definitely wasn't like sweating profusely like I can do here in Florida. I didn't use any other product with it though. As you guys saw, I didn't use a mattifying setting spray, not a ton of humidity out, even though we're in the middle of April in Florida, it's crazy. Like it's so much colder now than it usually is. So don't believe that it's like 
this great kind of oil control. I don't think it's a 24 hour, but I would say that it's mattifying. It definitely looks like still a soft matte finish on the face, which looks very soft focused. Like I was telling you guys, very blurring and all of that. It still looks good like up close too. It's not one of those where it looks great on camera, but if you guys like see it in real life, I don't think it looks good. Now, my close-up shots, you guys, are like my unadulterated face. So that's just what my skin looks like. This blush, the more I'm looking at it, like how airbrushing it looks on the, the skin. It's very like diffused, like, I think I'm really gonna enjoy this. And I really like this color too. It's a lot more warm, I think, than I thought it was gonna be in Hibiscus looking at the shades online, but it's still really pretty. It's like this in-between, like pinky warm tone. I, I really enjoyed it. All right, let's talk about the rest of the stuff. So the LYS bronzer, I didn't hate the way that this looked with the blush on top of it. I still stand by the fact that I feel like the shade is a little bit more warm and that it has like a yellow tone to it rather than like a fully neutral kind of grayish, you know, maybe beige-ish color that I really do enjoy in a lot of bronzers. A lot of lighter bronzers is stuff that I've been reaching for lately, but the formula is just so great. Like I literally can't wait to test this like on the forehead and see how it works but it looks good with the blush I mean I think it's kind of holding on like a little bit I just don't ever remember these being like meant to be kind of long-lasting formulas although the blushes anyway the shade was fine it ended up being fine again can't wait to test it on the forehead this bronzer is actually still there like not gonna lie that had a really long-lasting impact on me a lot of times um, I really can't even tell like a powder bronzer is still hanging on nine hours later, but I still see it there again I feel like this is one that definitely kind of pulls more yellowish, you know more um, Kind of warmish toned like especially if you look like just how yellow that looks on my swatch then it does like fully neutral It's a beautifully soft like buttery feel but the fragrance is so luxury perfume I'm just shocked that Sephora did that. When I open the compact, I'm hit with fragrance, like whoosh. You guys, it smells like someone went like this. That's how strong this is. I'm so shocked that Sephora did that. I don't know them to have fragranced anything. Um, this is a formula from Sephora in these high impact lipsticks. They're called the Lacquer Shine. Oh, I would get so many more shades just upon initial impression of this and love this one too in 03. These are so affordable that I would say if you're looking for like a glittery lip, this is good. This did not last very long on me, but again, none of these do. It's so lightly scented too, it's just so pleasant. I had a lot of fun testing everything though. I feel like all of these products I would definitely enjoy reaching for again. I don't mind perfume in a bronzer so long as it doesn't linger. Not like I don't like it in a lip product per se, which this was fragrant when I put it on, but the smell didn't linger for me. It wasn't annoying when I kept it on my my lips as you guys saw when I continued the rest of my makeup so I would recommend this but the bronzer is so much stronger if you guys do not like fragrance in your makeup products like steer clear of this I'm telling you guys it's unreal how strong that is I would love to hear your guys's thoughts in the comments below if you guys aren't currently subscribed I'd love to see you subscribe so you can stick around. I'm out of here for this evening, you guys. Again, I will be linking everything in the description box, including shade. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm out of here, and I hope to catch you all in my next one. Bye, guys.